a little bit about your journey of self-discovery. How did it start for you? It sounds like it started from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd have to say it did, you know, being the daughter of a seeker and a, and a thinker, my father thought very um, considerably on it, the nature of existence and the nature of, of humans. And he read a lot of Eric Fromm, you know, to have or to be and, and so I think it started with that exposure, the fact that he was someone who wanted to look beyond just our day-to-day -day grind and find out what, what, what does existence mean? And he looked for it in a lot of ways. He looked for it in books. And, and even though I don't think he believed in the institution of church, he made sure that we had a spiritual background so that later in life we could we could develop that if we, if that was a connection that was meaningful to us. Yeah. So I think I went through two phases. One was after I had been practicing law for a couple of years and had been in a very tumultuous marriage that ended. And there was a lot of maturity that came as a result of that. Most of it, I would say psychological, recognizing that I was repeating unhealthy codependent patterns that I had um, that I had developed and, and was, was living out. Mm -hmm. And so that the emerging from, from that first marriage with um, a better lens towards self-development and knowing how important that was, when I went through a second phase of that after the birth of um, my two daughters, I was prepared at that time to, to finally say the way I was um, white-knuckling life wasn't the way I wanted to see out the next several decades. So I decided that um, I, I hit a, a period of time in my second marriage. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, you know, these were two very different people that you married and you're the common denominator. So, um, you know, you can blame your partners all you want or you can figure out what it is you need to do to, to fix yourself to to get on uh, on a path that's going to give you some meaning so that you don't keep repeating these unhealthy patterns and so that's that's kind of when it hit I was about I want to say maybe maybe eight years into the practice of law by the time it really knocked me on my on my butt yeah yeah, so so I guess suffering is, you know, pain and suffering is usually the trigger for wanting to kind of uncover what's beneath the layers. Um, so would you say that those are the defining moments in your life or have there been instances where you really had to pause because you didn't have a reaction for them. You're trying to, to see what the lesson was in, in, in those defining moments. Was it the marriage and having children or was there something between you trying to practice law, trying to become this lawyer, a, a w powerful woman lawyer, but also trying to keep a family and, um, you know, serve a family. Boy, uh, I would say that there were certainly triggers, but I'd always had this sense that things needed to be different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I watched The Matrix for the first time, there was there was the quote, uh, the splinter in the mind. And that's how I felt. I felt very much like I was going through life, living the motions and, and going through those motions, but not feeling terribly connected to self. And I was living out these roles of by this time I was partner in my law firm. Um, I was, I was married. I had two children. I had sort of ticked off the boxes of this is everything you're supposed to do in your mid thirties. Yeah. And I still felt wildly restless and I didn't know why, why am I not happy? I mean, I was sort of outwardly happy, but inwardly I felt, um, I felt a stirring and I knew that, that, a, that a time when, was coming that I needed to reckon with myself because I was sort of putting on the hat of being the perfect parent, you know, I'm volunteering at school like crazy. I'm the, I'm the, uh, the, the room mom for my kids preschool class. And I'm, I'm trying to volunteer behind the snack bar and I'm trying to be the, you know, the perfect partner and the perfect wife and the, you know, the perfect mom. It was, it was all, it's, it felt very, um, 
consuming. Yeah, very consuming. I was I was very, very um, frustrated and completely unfulfilled. And it's not like I didn't love my family, I love the opportunity to do those things. But I became deeply restless in myself because there were things within me that were not being fulfilled. I was living out these sort of uh, roles for everyone else and wasn't doing anything to nurture my inner spirit. So what was missing? Well, it turns out that it was that relationship to self when when things began to collapse. And this was really it, it was it was funny um, and in a way a little bit scary. I when I was home with my daughter, um, I took I was fortunate. I was a partner in my firm. And so I, you know, I had opportunities to be able to work from home. And so I had a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility that that women in our profession with children don't have, but I was able to work from home a lot. I cut, cut back my work schedule um, significantly. And uh, there was a period of time when I thought I might be developing a mental illness because I was thinking constantly. Mm -hmm. It was like my brain would not shut off as I'm making the beds, as I'm getting the girls you know, breakfast together as I'm cleaning the house. And, I'm, you know, I just, it was like the voices in my head were so incredibly loud. And, you know, mental illness, unfortunately, has affected my family. And so I began to get concerned that there was something very seriously wrong with me. And I started, I started thinking about going back to church. I had left my religious upbringing many, many years ago. I, I started looking for any guru. I started meditating. I started um, reading anything I could get on um, sort of quieting the mind. Um, and what I realized is that's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I just hadn't been alone and been still enough to actually be conscious of it. And now I was home with my daughter. It was it, first it started with when I just had the one. And we know how busy you are as a mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your children aren't, aren't as old as mine, but I remember. And, I, and, and there was a stillness in my day that I had never had. It was just, it was like so much quiet. And I was starting to hear myself. And what I would normally go through the day, but of course I'm answering phone calls, writing demand letters and trying to settle cases and I'm running a law practice and taking care of kids. When that, you know, narrowed, I could hear myself and I thought I was going, I thought I was going mad. Yeah. Um, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. Yeah. You know, I guess I feel like a lot of people go through this, but people, um, don't have the tools um, or the the means to really to, to think that maybe that is a calling that you need to, you know, wake up to your true self, to your higher self. And a lot of people do embrace religion and, and, you know, anchor themselves in that. And, you know, everybody believes in what they believe for their own personal reasons. But I do remember going through that stage and I do remember thinking there was something wrong that who I was attracting and what I was doing um, was because there was something wrong with me. And, and then there was also like perhaps some shame or, you know, the cultural residue or, you know, anything that came from the past that, you know, I hadn't really listened to or paid attention to but it was suddenly really clear and it was affecting the way that I felt about myself and other people especially I would catch myself judging other people and then I would see how I would judge myself and it was cruel I was really cruel <laughs> and and so I, I sympathize with that so much